All right, so let's talk a little bit about how a machine works for uh, layering when I'm collaborating with an editor. Now, this is the third stream that I've done in this kind of this topic. Um, I was just sort of one minute rundown. I was working on LA's uh, 48 hour film project with a team last weekend. And because I had to take some of my gear remotely, I wound up relying a lot on my machine MK3 interface and just my laptop with a hard drive for library sounds and that sort of thing. And what I, uh, having to work with machine actually illuminated some really cool strategies that I just love. In the first, um, first part of this series, I talked about what I discovered, what the, what the three main things were. A quick summary of that is um, being able to adjust to cuts when I get re-edits. Um, today, we're going to talk about layering and being able to collaborate in real time. And then another aspect of this is, is doing it tactilely, doing it with my hands as opposed to keyboard shortcuts and a mouse, stuff like that that's not, for me, as musically intuitive. It's not conducive to being creative. But today, what I want to do is go over um, an extension of, of my last lesson on using MIDI triggers to trigger scenes because... Um, I want to make sure that everybody understands how that works and then show you kind of just a very simplistic example here of, of how that works and, and especially why the layering is such a big help, okay? So um, what I'm going to start with here is this project in the background and I'm going to go ahead, let me see, where's my mouse? And I'm going to open up machine here. Um, We've gone over this a little bit before, but when you have machine loaded up as a VST instrument, you can trigger scenes, these uh, scenes one, two, and three, by going into your uh, VSTs menu. This isn't for standalone, this is for when it's running as a VST. Go down to MIDI change. You have some MIDI change options here, but you want to work with scenes and make sure that this is selected MIDI note. And I just leave it on channel one and that works great for me. Okay, so what happens now is that anytime my DAW, which in this context is uh, Cubase, that's my DAW of choice, but if you were using um, really just about anything that can support a VST instrument like machine, you're gonna find it's basically exactly the same. The main thing here is that I, I've created little, um, just MIDI parts here, they're super simple. I've named them scene one, two, and three, but that's just me naming them so I know what they go to in machine. And what this does is it, is it plays C uh, minus two. So we can see that all the way down here. I got this little MIDI note, C minus two. And uh, this one plays C sharp minus two, and this plays D minus two. So it's just going up a half step, one key MIDI note. So obviously any DAW that can play MIDI notes into a VST instrument will do this as long as you go into your machine and you select that edit menu to MIDI change and then you enable MIDI notes to trigger your scenes. So what's going to happen here is when I play this first one there, it's going to trigger scene one. When I play this one, it's going to see, trigger scene two and then say scene three. And you'll see these scenes switch. So let's just run through this okay so we got scene one and i'm just showing you the visible here you got scene two and then it comes to scene three and here's my little video up here in the in the right hand corner is just some shots uh a camera uh, um shot that i did riding on a train like last week or a couple of weeks ago so um when i get a re-edit from uh the director or the producer or editor and they've changed the cuts. What I like to do is just come right back in here and, oh, you know, now I need this to be there. And I needed that to be there. And I know that the uh, trigger is going to make the right scene play at the right time. So that's a, uh, an extension of what I talked about in the last one. And it feeds into this idea of collaborating with layers and instrumentation because I might come up with something in my studio that sounds great to me musically, like it's got a hi-hat, for example, and I decide, uh, well, the, the editor or director feels like, well, you know, we really like maybe the pad sound, but 
the, uh, the, the tambourine is conflicting too much of the voice. Can we lose it? So, of course, yeah, we can. But it, in other models, I would have to go, okay, I'll make a note of that. Maybe I'll shoot you uh, a revised audio later on, or I'm there in the studio and I have to go into my uh, actual project and like maybe mute some stuff, mute the MIDI event, mute some notes, whatever. But here in Machine, I find it's much more graceful. Let's say I've got this example in scene three and I've got this tambourine on, uh, on my drums track. I can just take it out. I'm just using my MK3 here standard uh, interface for enabling or disabling a, um, a pattern. So that's it. You know, now I'm done. I come back into uh, my project and, you know, when this fires now and it gets to, um, sorry, I gotta see here, when it gets to scene three, oh, there's no tambourine. So that's ideal because I responded to their creative needs, their technical needs in real time. They can see it immediately. I look good because I'm on top of it. I can give them what they need quickly. And for them, they might come back and be like, ah, actually, you know, I like the tambo. Can we maybe just uh, make it less? And then I can filter it in real time using effects and stuff like that within machine and that whole process of being able to um, respond immediately is so important with creative people in a commercial environment because you want to keep the creative flow going. You don't want to have to stop the creative flow in order to deal with some technical problem. And that is why I am kind of raising the alarm of what I feel for me, at least, was a major discovery about using machine in film scoring, and I'm using it now uh, to write my production cues for the same reasons. I can create scenes, put them together, um, and then when I am maybe listening back to it, I'm doing some mixing, some editing, excuse me, then I can add layers, pull layers out. It just, uh, it just makes it so much better to stay in that creative flow. Now, in the next live stream, which I'm going to do uh, next week, so it's Friday today, we'll do this on, on Monday, um, is going to orient around some of the things that I learned about staying in the flow. And um, so if you try this, I would say give it a whirl for the next couple of days, then come back, watch the stream, and uh, I'll give you some more insights from what I learned and how I think about staying in the creative flow. It's gonna, it's gonna lean a whole lot on having hardware. Um, I use the MK3, and then I also have uh, right here in front of me, the Complete Control S49, which has some redundant control, um, but I'll talk a bit more about that in the next stream. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, I am going to start offering AMAs and discussions through Zoom on these topics as well. So keep an eye out for that. And I will see you in the next live stream. Thanks again for watching.